Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. On today's feature, we're going to be talking about the Zoom security drama at the moment. We're going to be talking about the main issues that are currently happening and also shortlisting a few of the best Zoom alternatives out there for you guys. So without further ado folks, let's dive into today's video. <laughs> So first off, I've used Zoom personally for the last two to three years and I haven't had any issues and, and naturally um, it is good that all of these security flaws are being brought up. I think it's a positive thing, it then being found out. Um, and of course, um, you know, especially with the Zoom boom that's happening right now, this dramatic increase in Zoom users, it is so important more than ever for them to focus on it. Um, apparently, Zoom in the last, well, since December, they had 10 million daily active users. Now they have 200 million daily active users. So there's a lot of attention on them. And uh, I'll obviously go through all of the developments. Um, I'm not a security expert myself, folks. I'm a user. So I've included all of the links that I've referred to throughout this feature um, in the description below. So you can maybe source your own, but I'll be referencing from them. So let's start with the Zoom drama. I'll be covering this as a collection of issues rather than a timeline. I think that's probably more effective. Now everything obviously has been blurted out all at once with this security issue to literally probably over three or four days um, with the Zoom boom that is happening right now. And apparently Zoom have battled with issues before, um, getting an Apple block for their issues with their Mac application. Um, due to some of the user interaction access that it wanted. So they haven't been brand new to security issues, but at the same time, when you've got, for example, the UK government using it as their main port of call and even showcasing their Zoom ID, um, it can be quite worrying because obviously there's that security and access. So let's go through some of the issues. So the first issue is the Zoom ID. So with every Zoom call, um, you get something called an ID, which is 9 to 11 digits long. And essentially what people are doing is they're randomly generating these Zoom IDs, just through guessing a bunch of numbers between 9 and 11, and naturally joining and broadcasting inappropriate stuff on these Zoom calls. Um, and even in some cases, people have heard them just listening in to these calls, which is definitely terrifying. Um, imagine just having a third person pop up and listening into your call and not being able to necessarily get rid of them. Um, so naturally people are concerned, especially if you've got large group calls. Um, I've seen this happening with universities, schools, churches, uh, political conferences, and even, um, you know, there's a doubt threat of it even happening with weddings now that they're remote. So Zoom ID has been an issue and something that Probably the most predominant issue, it's been called Zoom bombing when you've um, got someone that's coming to a call that's not meant to be there. Um, so that's pretty scary. The second thing has been the Zoom targeted ads. And this is probably something that actually started it all. Um, and apparently Zoom was quietly sending data to Facebook about user Zoom habits, even when that user doesn't have a Facebook account. Um, and this actually happened uh, with the iOS application, um, notifying Facebook when they had opened the application regarding things like the device model, phone carrier, and also um, the app they opened um, and more. So that's pretty scary itself um, and naturally something that you don't want to be obviously sharing information like that. The third thing, you're probably like, oh my God, three things, end-to-end -end security. So in my video, I actually pointed out that in the top left-hand corner, they have some indication that they are end-to-end -end secure and even had on their website about end-to-end -end security. And apparently a Zoom spokesperson um, stated that it is not possible to enable E2E encryption for Zoom video meetings. And uh, obviously that's a bit of misstatement, a bit of mismarketing, because they're selling a feature that uh, that you believe to be existing when it's actually not existing. So as you can imagine, um, you know, not something that you, you know, provides trust in you every day. Now the fourth feature was a feature and not necessarily something that um, they did wrong per se, but there's this thing called attendee tracking uh, inside of Zoom. And it's come under fire because this feature allows you to, once enabled, allows you to check 
whether the participants of the meeting are clicking away from the Zoom window during a call. And that could be after 30 seconds. So that's pretty intrusive, I think, like being able to know whether a colleague is on email and not on Zoom um, could probably be something that is probably not appropriate to have. Um, but again, that's more of a, a moral thing versus a security flaw. So uh, there's been a lot of conversation on Twitter about it. DHH from Basecamp actually was pretty much hammering Zoom all week, which I think that Basecamp have probably got some of the best remote work, um, you know, I guess not skills, but um, values in the industry. And even uh, there's a great article on the signals versus noise about presence prisons, which is something that they reference, um, obviously, the attendee tracking. And uh, they have obviously done... Um, some good things uh, in that feedback. So I'll, I'll talk to you about what Zoom are doing now to fix this. Um, so the first thing they're doing is a 90-day a freeze. And essentially, that's a freeze on all new features launching. Um, and apparently, all of the Zoom's engineering resources will now be focused um, on the safety and privacy issues. And uh, the company is currently working on a review um, with third parties involved to get all of the security concerns out. Um, and so so basically, every internal uh, focus is going to be on security, which I definitely think uh, is something that um, they needed. So uh, that was a statement from the CEO stating, over the next 90 days, we're committed to dedicating resources needed to identify, address, and fix issues proactively. We also committed to being transparent throughout this process. Now, I agree that's a really good thing that they've done there, like literally putting all their time and attention into it. Um, and the statement didn't come as fast as people wanted, um, but at least it's come. Um, so that's a good thing. So uh, the, I guess two things that you could probably, uh, you know, focus on in the moment um, if you are a Zoom user is obviously you've got to use Zoom ID, but now the thing that you can do is set up passwords with them. So for any new Zoom meetings that I have, I'll be setting up passwords so that people can't randomly join and uh, naturally, um, you know, interrupt your meeting or, uh, you know, do some inappropriate stuff. And I believe they've made this default in education accounts now. So that's at least calming, uh, you know, for schools and universities that are using it. Um, also, there's been an update on the iOS application. So if you go to the App Store and go to Automatic Updates or the Updates area, make sure you've got the new iOS update if you use it there because apparently this removes the code that tracks the ads. Um, as I said, the users were susceptible to their personal information being used for targeted ads. Um, so if you want to read any of the articles referencing this, folks, they're going to be below. The majority of them from The Verge. Uh, it's been a great coverage from The Verge. And if you wanted to see the tweets as well from DHA, DHA, uh, DHH uh, from Basecamp, then you can check them in the descriptions below. So let's talk a little bit about some of the alternatives that are out there. Now, um, the first off, uh, the one that I wanted to mention is Cisco WebEx. Now, Cisco WebEx I've used in the past. I believe I got invited about a month and a half ago. was pretty impressed by the design. Um, what it has particularly well is the chat features are very good. They have storage integrations that allow you to connect it up with say the likes of Google Drive um, and other such storage platforms. You can host up to 100 participants in each meeting and that's up from 50 and you can have meetings as long as you want as well. And they've got this like special offer page with a WeCare 2020 so you can get some sort of discount on there. I've noticed a lot of the video conferencing apps, um, even Zoom themselves have been obviously making their minimum sort of default access um, a lot cheaper um, or pretty much free because obviously a lot of people are going to be using them and they want to obviously gain uh, that loyalty now um, potentially to be used afterwards. Now the second one um, I wanted to mention is GoToMeeting and apparently this is created by the folks at LogMeIn. Uh, it's not free, I haven't seen a free plan but the plans start at about $10 per month but I know it's got good enterprise access and I know meetings um, f f run I know meetings run fairly well through this application. I maybe used it about a year ago and it seemed pretty smooth to get in and out. Uh, and I think this is a mu much more focused on corporate individuals. 
So number three, there is a, a, a tool called Join Me. Um, this has a really good Slack integration. So you, once you connect up the Slack integration, you can start Join Me's for your team or externally, which is helpful for you to Slack connection. Um, you can have meetings of free uh, that are free, which is good. Um, I know some uh, services like Zoom even limit meetings of three. I believe that was as of um, since their, their update. So that's something that's good. So if you have, say, say for example, a co-founder um, and you also wanted to do a call with an external party, then you've got Join Me, which has the free access to that. There was also an option to put you in circles as well, a little bit of like the around um, video conferencing software that I mentioned a while ago in a video that we did. Now, number four is Whereby, and this was actually recommended by uh, my good friend Joel, um, and he said Whereby was something that they're using at the moment as a company. Um, I think it's a really friendly software. I believe I got invited maybe in the last six months. Um, I think it was um, jo Joan from, um, um, it was Joan from Everyday Habit who invited me. We ca caught up a chat, and I think the, the webinar style, so you can see yourself and the person all in this really clean view, it's a very friendly platform. And the one thing you can do with the premium plans is I believe you can make custom branding. So you can like brand it to your colors, your logos, and also your design that you wish. It's a really well-designed application, has chat abilities, record abilities as well. So that's one to take a look at. Number five is Google Hangouts, or actually apparently it's called Hangouts Meet now. I didn't actually know this. Um, and it's free for any G Suite users. Um, it's a reliable service. Many people used to use it for streaming, but now it's naturally a meeting tool. So if you've got a Google Suite account, that's going to work for you. Number six is Uber Conference. I've heard about Uber Conference, never used it myself, but they've recently upgraded their Uber Conference free plan to allow longer call durations and up to 50 participants, which is pretty good. So naturally, it's getting better um, based on this. They've got some special features. Uh, voice intelligence is one of them, where you can basically get a summary of your meeting. It basically transcribes your entire meeting. And even, apparently, you can automate some of the tasks that come out of it, which is pretty cool. And there is also custom whole music, so you can upload your own sort of like waiting around music. Say you wanted an elevator soundtrack, I don't know. Um, or even you're a music company and you want to add that one in there. Um, that could be pretty cool. So that's custom hold music. So Uber Conference, I've always seen uh, to be a good service. Um, number seven is Zoho Meetings. This is one that if you've got the Zoho Suite, um, it will come inside of that plan, I believe. So you can record meetings. Um, you can utilize it for webinars as well. But I believe that comes at slightly higher pricing. Um, but this one looks very similar to Zoom in its design and uh, it seems to work well as a video conferencing tool. Number eight is probably the most popular, um, and naturally that is Skype. Um, and many people saying, um, if Microsoft worked, I think it was Tom Warren on Twitter, if Microsoft worked harder in the early days um, with Skype, then they definitely could have dominated the market in how Zoom is doing now. So I agree with that statement, like they should have, um, they could have made it to what Zoom is today. Um, but Skype also works as a phone like many of the other ones, um, but a little bit more seamlessly in my opinion. You've got Skype Meet, which can apparently uh, blur backgrounds and it's a little bit more suitable for uh, meeting style uh, conversations. And you can even record uh, calls up to 30 days in there too. Now, two other ones. If you are a Microsoft um, 365 uh, business premium customer, you'll have access to Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams does have a video chat feature as well. And also Slack, I believe, has a video chat feature which allows you to, to communicate with you and your team. So folks, um, please do let me know whether I missed anything. Naturally, the news is fast moving and obviously this conversation can continue to in, be continued in comments. Um, please do share what uh, alternative you're going to be using um, or whether you're sticking with Zoom. I'm probably going to be sticking with Zoom, but making my focus on the passwords and hoping in the next sort of 30 to 60 days, they introduce some very strict uh, tools that allow you to be a bit more secure uh, when you're using your meetings. I think this is a big wake up call, if I'm honest, for Zoom. Um, you know, with a lot of, uh, I guess it's that Spider Man quote, with a lot of responsibility. 
Um, I completely forgot it. But you get the point. Um, you know, comes uh, focus. I don't know what the quote is. <laughs> but it naturally will uh, kick them into gear, I think. So, folks, if you enjoyed today's video, please do like it. It will allow it to be shared on the YouTube community. And also subscribe if you're brand new. It'd honestly be fantastic to have you. We cover tons of features like this, and I think you'll find value from it. Anyway, folks, uh, I will talk to you all very soon. Make sure you have a great week and an awesome weekend. Cheers, everyone. Bye.